Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. In today's video, we'll be making it so that the player can only look around, but they can't move or jump or do anything else until the round has started. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. As always, if you want access to the project, you can get that down below on my GitHub page. And I want to quickly say sorry that this video will be quite short and simple, nothing that interesting today, just because I've got a lot of planning to do. I've been really busy and this Friday coming up, I've got a live stream over on Unity's channel. Most of you are probably aware by now. So I've been doing preparation for that, making sure it's all going to go smoothly. So yeah, for this video, we're simply going to make it so that when the player spawns, their input is disabled. And then when it goes three, two, one, go, the input's then re-enabled. And this will be good enough for now because we're also doing movement client side, but eventually for obviously reasons to stop hackers and um, you know, just to stop any cheating, we want to do everything that we can server side like that. So movement should definitely be server side. Um, but as I said, right now it's currently client side. So I'm going to do the same with input. Input obviously will be client side. Normally how it works is if you want to jump, you press the space bar, then it will tell the server, you know, I press the jump button. It'll be like, okay, uh, you can jump, but maybe, you know, the server will have to check if you're on the ground, you can jump only then. Or maybe if your game has double jump, you'll check, you know, have you only done one so far or none? Um, but if you've done two, you can't. So all the validation for what actually goes on should be on the server. But at the end of the day, the input is on the client side. So what we're doing today is we're going to decide, we're going to um, disable input on the client side so that we don't tell the server, for example, to try moving when we're at the start of the round. The problem will be though, if you were, you know, to cheat, you could actually fake telling the server that, you know, you want to move uh, even when you're not allowed and it would still allow you to because the server isn't validating whether you can. We could make some Boolean on the server to say only move if the round has started, but then you'd have to have loads of Booleans, you know, only move if the round has started and if you're not stunned and if you're not dead and, you know, all this other stuff. We need to actually build a system in a separate video that will handle the state almost, like what the player can do at certain times. For now, we're just going to toggle input on and off. So we'll start with the input manager, make a mono behavior called input manager. And we need a dictionary of string to ints. This is the current way I'm solving it. So the string is the action map name and the int is the number of things blocking you from doing that, that thing. So uh, if we look over here, we've got the map for the player, okay? Uh, so there are different things that stop the player, you know, doing whatever, maybe you're stunned, maybe the round is starting, whatever, right? So the string would be player and the int would be how many things are stopping the player from doing whatever it's doing. Um, we do need to make a more sophisticated system in a later video where it'll be, you know, maybe the player can move but not jump. So we need to have, um, rather than maps, actually the actions, but that'll be more complicated and we'll do that separately. That also will need to be done on the server. The server needs to know whether we can or can't do something. We can't trust the client, but for now we are just as we get this built up. So then here we have um, a static instance of the control so we can grab it in our code. So we're actually gonna change the movement code a little bit rather than subscribing to its own instance of controls. It uses this like global one, um, but by global, it's not persistent throughout your entire game. It actually is only in that particular scene. So you'll notice down here, we enable and disable it in that scene. And when this object is destroyed, so when we change scenes, we actually set it to null so that anything, let's say you're stunned, um, okay. And then you, you know, close the game or the, the server disconnects you. You're not stunned anymore. So everything should be like reset between scenes. Nothing, no um, input blocking should persist between scenes. So we use add to be able to effectively block something. So when we add something, it means this is now being blocked. And then when we, when we remove it, it's then no longer being blocked. So we say, uh, try and get the value for this map name. So if it's not already there, it'll just give us zero. Then when you set a value in a dictionary, if the key doesn't exist, it'll actually make it for you. So the first time we run this, it'll make a new entry in the dictionary for the player at a value of zero plus one. So one, meaning one thing is blocking it. And then we call update. So the update will say, go grab the value. And then if the value is greater than zero, disable it and return, otherwise enable it. Now by disabling and enabling the action map, it allows us to, you know, basically allow the player to use that input or disable the player from using that input. Then remove is when we no longer want to stop their input. So we say, go get the value and then set it to the value minus one. And uh, if that value minus one is negative, then we just set it back to zero. This is just a safety catch. And then we just also update, okay? So the way we know whether we can do something is whether uh, the value is greater than zero or not. If it's greater than zero, we can't do it. If it's not, then we can do it. For now, I've made a um, class with some constants. Obviously there's only one right now for the player string, just so we don't have to type strings everywhere. This is just a constant for us to use. Then over in the player movement controller, just change these two lines. So you'll have had it saying controls dot player, da, da, da. 
This is now input manager.controls, meaning you can delete the code we had here. For our own controls instance, we actually use the input manager's control instance and everything else is the exact same. Except from actually, uh, you can also remove the on enable and on disable callbacks. You don't need those anymore because we're actually doing that over in the action, sorry, the input manager that's done here for you. So then over in the spawn system down here, we've got the on start client. So when the spawn system effectively, like when we're spawned in, we will disable the player's input entirely. So it disables all their input, but then it actually, we're going to specifically enable the look input. Now, this isn't the best solution to the problem, but it's the solution we're going with for now. Okay. Until later on when we need it to be better. So yeah, disable all the players input, like movement, looking, jumping, attacking, and then just re-enable looking. So at this point, all you can do is look around. And finally in the round system, okay, last time we were debug.logging when the round was starting, but actually now when the round's starting, all we want to do is remove the players thing. So this is like removing a lock. Think of it like that. We normally, we add a lock over here and now we're removing the lock. So the player can now do everything. Over inside Unity, make a game object and stick on the input manager script and then put this game object, maybe make it a prefab and go put it in any scene where you need to take input from your action map. Then go back over to the lobby press play, build the game, or build the game, then press play, and see if it all works. Let's do the normal host, ready up, join, ready up. Okay, now I'm gonna try moving and looking around. So I should be able to look, but not be able to move until it goes three, two, one, go. Okay, so right now I'm looking, I'm trying to move, I can't move, and as soon as it says begin, I can start moving again. Okay, so there we go, we've got it working. Um, now, this works for now, as I've said, it's trusting the client, and eventually you don't want to really trust the client. Um, we do need to build our own kind of uh, server-side movement with input handling, uh, sorry, lag, lag comp compensation. There's so much more to it and we'll get into those more advanced topics over time. I still need to make sure I do more research on that and make sure I teach it to you guys well enough. But for now, we've got a simple solution to say, you know, don't send it to the server if um, the input is disabled, though obviously someone could cheat technically and uh, bypass that and start moving around at the start, but we'll get to that eventually. Thanks everyone for watching. If you like the video, then please leave a like and subscribe. It would mean a lot. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to John Salig, Liz Kimber, Jean Ran, David McDermott, Exit Return Zero, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rec, Yoris Letta, Heidi Zorko, Rene, Budere, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.